that v equal 2, negative 3, 6, and w equal k, negative 2, 4, for k is greater than 0. The angle between v and w is pi over 3. Find the value of k. All right, so you see I've got the formulas here for vectors from the formula booklet. Let's see how we apply them. Well, we're told the angle between two vectors is pi over 3, so it's pretty obvious that we're going to need this formula for angle between two vectors. So when we're talking about the cosine of theta, well, theta is pi over 3. So we can start writing this formula, cosine of theta, which is pi over 3, is equal to the dot product, or the scalar product, of v and w. Okay, so it tells us here um, a rearrangement of the formula, but this is the one we're actually interested in having, uh, the dot product, v dot w, is the i component of v times the i component of w, plus the j component of v times the j component of w, plus the k component of v times the k component of w. So that numerator would look like t um, i times i, so 2 times k, which is 2k, plus j times j, so negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, plus k times k, 6 times 4, which is 24. So there's our numerator. And then we are dividing it by the magnitude of v times the magnitude of w. Right, so the magnitude, there's a formula right here. What we do is we square each individual component, add it together, and then take the square root of the whole thing. So for the magnitude of v, we're going to have 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 6 squared, the square root of all that. Right, so 2 squared is, well, let me just write this. We'll have 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 6 squared, and I need to take the square root of all that. And then I have to do the same thing for w. I need to take k squared plus negative 2 squared plus 4 squared and the square root of all that. So I'll have k squared plus negative 2 squared plus 4 squared. Okay, and the square root of all that. Right. So now we can start to uh, clean this up a little bit. Cosine of pi over 3. Uh, we can use the unit circle to figure this out. Of course, we've got the calculator, so we could figure it out. Um, if we type that in, we would get hopefully a half. Let's just verify pi divided by 3. Yeah, we get 0.5. Okay, but um, in case you didn't have a nice answer like that, um, right, sometimes you get root 2 over 2, which is hard to recognize on the calculator. Here's what root 2 over 2 looks like. Oops, that's not root 2, that's, uh, let's see, root 2 divided by 2, right, is 0 0.707, so you might be getting an answer like that, and it's not obviously uh, clear what that is, whereas a half is easy to see. So just quickly refresh the uh, unit circle here, you're going to have three angles, pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3, right, so pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. Okay, so we've got uh, the cosine values, which represents the x values. So those x values out here, um, this is the farthest distance that x travels from the origin to this point versus traveling here. It's a fairly short distance, pi over 3. And obviously my diagram is not the scale, but you get the idea. So um, it goes from the x values, pi over 6, this is the largest and the largest it can be uh, for these angles is root 3 over 2. Then it goes to root 2 over 2. And then it goes to 1 over 2. So if you wanted a pattern, you can think, OK, I'm dividing them all by 2. And then it just goes 3, 2, 1, where I take the square root of all of them. So square root of 3, square root of 2, and square root of 1, which is just 1. So however you do it, um, in the end, you get the cosine of pi over 3 is 0 0.5, or a half. I actually like fractions more. I'm going to write it as a fraction. You can use a decimal, whatever you prefer. All right. Um, so we'll have 2k plus 6 plus 24. We can simplify that to 2k plus 30. And then let's see what we have here. 2 squared is 4, plus negative 3 squared is 9. So 4 plus 9 is 13, plus 36. 
13 plus 36 is 49. So I'm taking the square root of that. And then here I'll have k squared plus negative 2 squared plus 4 squared. So k squared plus 4 plus 16 is k squared plus, uh, what did I say? <laughs> 20, right? Um, okay. And so we're getting there. We can simplify even more because I know that the square root of 49 is 7. So I'll have 2k plus 30 over 7 times the root of k squared plus 20. So I'm multiplying uh, my denominator by 7. So if I multiply the whole thing by 7, I'll get the 7 out and move it to the other side. So get some more space here. I'm going to multiply both sides by 7. So I have 7. So I have 7 halves because it's 1 half times 7 equals 2k plus 30 over. Uh, the root of k squared plus 20. All right, so this isn't a very nice equation, um, but we do have the calculator for this problem. So we can type this in, as nasty as it looks, and get an answer. So um, how I like to solve these problems is to go into y equals and put one side of the equation into y1 and the other side into y2 and just see where the lines intersect. So y1, I can say that's 7 halves or 3.5 and y2 is this whole bit so I'm going to do a uh, parenthesis, a bracket for my numerator so I'll have 2x plus 30 and I'm going to divide that and again I'll use another parenthesis for my denominator so that I make sure I'm dividing by the entire thing so this is the square root of x squared plus 20 okay and then close out that bracket so I'll go to graph so here's the line 7 halves, 3.5, and we see there's the other line. Um, so there's one intersection point, and it looks like we'll probably have another intersection point over here. Something to keep in mind when solving this now is that k must be greater than 0. So I know that this answer here is going to give me a negative value for k, so I don't want that one. I want the one where k is greater than 0. So I'm hoping there's an intersection point somewhere over there. So I need to change my window. I'm going to shift it manually to the right. So I'll make my x max values a little bit larger instead of 10, maybe 20. See if that's enough to get the intersection. Uh, maybe. It might be there. Let's take a look. We'll run the intersect second trace number 5. And we'll move the cursor over to the answer we want. Let's see if it finds it. There we go. So um, they're equal when x is 18.774. So to three significant figures, that would mean k is equal to 18.8, because uh, that 7 would round this 7 up to 8.